Hi, I'm Natalie and welcome back to Batty Natty Bakes. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a basic beginner's sourdough bread. This is the first sourdough bread recipe that I ever learned how to make and it's the one that I make most often now. That's because it's so simple and the dough is not too wet so it's easy to handle and I've added just a touch of whole grain for some really nice flavor. This bread always comes out so deliciously crusty and with a nice and even crumb. So I really hope you give this recipe a try and let's get to it. First thing we want to do is just mix all of the ingredients together until they're well combined. The night before, I fed 7 grams of starter with 30 grams of flour and 30 grams of water and let it rise for 8 hours overnight. You can see my starter is really bubbly and active and that's exactly when you want to use it when it's at its peak and at least doubled in size. We don't really need to worry about kneading or developing gluten at this point, we just want to combine all the ingredients together and then let the dough rest for about 40 minutes. During those 40 minutes, the flour will get a chance to absorb the water and giving the dough this period to just rest and chill out will make it much easier to work with later on. After 40 minutes, it's time to knead the dough. And you can do this however you like, you can knead it on the counter or in the bowl, and you'll see that because we've given the dough a chance to rest, it will only take about one or two minutes of kneading for the dough to smooth out and come together. And at that point, you just want to cover it up and let it rest for another 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, it's time for the first coil fold. Coil folding involves just lifting the dough out of the bowl and tucking the loose side underneath the rest of the dough, and you repeat this process on all four sides of the dough. This is a great way to gently build tension and develop structure and gluten. I only ended up doing two coil folds for this batch, but there's no set number. Just keep an eye on your dough, and once it starts to flatten out and looks like it could use some strength, give it another fold. I let this particular dough bulk ferment for a total of 5 hours at about 72 degrees Fahrenheit, starting from when I mixed in the starter. The window for ending bulk fermentation is pretty flexible and depends a lot on the temperature of the room. Here you can see a before and after comparison from the last coil fold to the end of bulk fermentation. You don't technically need the dough to double in size. As long as you see noticeable and significant growth and the dough feels light and airy, then you can move on to pre-shape. I like to loosen the dough from the edges of the bowl and then give it a really gentle coil fold just to help lift it out of the bowl and onto the counter. I then use either my hands or a bench scraper to round the dough into a ball. You can skip pre-shaping if you want, it's not mandatory, but I tend to get better structure and height in my finished loaf when I do it. I then leave it to rest on the counter for anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes. Before final shaping, I dust my banneton with whole wheat flour to keep the dough from sticking. But I generally use white bread flour to dust my hands and the dough when final shaping. I'm going to shape this loaf into a batard, or an oval-shaped loaf. There are many different ways to shape your dough, so just use whichever method you're most comfortable with.
I ended up letting my dough final proof for 15 minutes at room temperature and then for 20 hours in the fridge. But final proofing is really flexible. You can proof completely at room temperature for two to four hours or stick the dough straight in the fridge for 12 to 24 hours or do a combination of both. It just depends on your schedule and how your dough is looking. The next day, it's finally time to bake your bread. I'm doing the poke test here, so if you poke the dough and the indent slowly fills but still remains, then you know you've proofed your dough properly. It's not a perfect test, but something useful to know. I then go to preheat my oven to 500 degrees Fahrenheit with a cast iron pan and a roasting pan inside. Once the oven is preheated, it's time to score your dough. So you want to position the top half of the blade at a 45 degree angle to the surface of the dough and give it a nice long slash down the middle. I use a cutting board to slide the dough into the oven and pour about a cup of water into the roasting pan to create steam. I then let it bake for 15 minutes at 500 degrees Fahrenheit. After 15 minutes, I remove the roasting pan, lower the oven temperature to 410 degrees Fahrenheit, and let it bake for another 15 minutes. This bread really is my basic go-to loaf of bread. The crumb is soft and even. It's open, but not too open, which is my favorite kind of crumb because it's practical enough to make sandwiches or toast or whatever you want, really. And I love the flavor that just a bit of whole grain adds to the bread. As you can tell, I'm a big fan of this recipe and I hope you guys give it a try too. Thanks so much for watching and please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more tasty sourdough and non-sourdough recipes.